Okay, good evening everyone. Lovely to see you all here. Welcome to the Bath Summer Camp Sunday evening session. We've got a great night in store. Um, but before we go into that, we're going to uh, sing some choruses, sing some praises to the Lord. The Lord's been very good in our life. He's given us a great salvation. And it really is nice to be back all together once again, singing praises to the Lord. So we're going to start with number 75, Living for Jesus. Okay, right, we're ready to go. So we'll start after three. One, two, three, living for Jesus is the best. Oh, actually, sorry, so let's start that again. Sorry, I forgot how to count right in the middle of that. Three or four, so it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. It should be four, right? Let's try that again. Sorry, everyone, I'm totally. One, two, three, four, living for Jesus is the best. everything that we do here tonight and we'll just ask um we'll ask our brother john bovis if he'd just like to do that for us praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What people said, amen. If you'd like to take your seats again, we're going to go to number 79, if that same spirit. Raise Christ from the dead. After three. One, two, three. If that same spirit, the raised Christ from the dead, dwell in you. Well in you, if that same spirit that raised us from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you, we shall quicken your mortal bodies. If the spirit dwell in you, hallelujah, if that same spirit that raised us from the dead dwell in you, dwell in you, if that same spirit that raised us from the dead dwell in you. Dwell in you, in the same spirit, the race goes on. 
Six. Now let's do number 102, the old, old story. One, two, three. The old, old story is never new. The old, old story, praise the Lord, is that Jesus died for. story there <laughs> so thank you very much to the guys in the slides there that's great no problem right another classic let's do number two five six when the saints got nothing now after three one two three oh, when the saints go marching in oh, when the saints go marching in Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. When they crown him Lord of all, oh, when they crown him Lord of all. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when they crown him Lord of all. When the stars begin to fall, oh, when the stars begin. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the stars begin to fall. When the trumpet sounds a call, oh, when the trumpet sounds a call. Oh Lord, I want to be in that number. Okay, just the first verse, one more time. When the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. 
slow it down just a little bit we're going to go to a p67 when we're picking it up and after this we're going to have a, a couple of testimonies about how the lord's picked uh, certain people up and turned their lives around and got them moving into a great place of salvation so we've got two testimonies we've got our brother simon from the west london fellowship and his baby john are faithful in the core there so looking forward to that and also our sister Candy. One, two, three. Well, he picked me up, he turned me round, he set my feet on higher ground. Glory, hallelujah, to believe, to believe. He gives me peace, he gives me joy. This soul world cannot destroy. My life was silver, so and there was not a bright tomorrow. Days are darkest night, the light I could not see. Since he came to me, I'm sinning, I'm sinning, 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 sinning,
the life, the other life called me up and I started like living that kind of lifestyle. And until I met the Peruth, like she's a, she's one of my friends. So when I came back in 2018, it's like the same thing that happened, all the spiritual gifts, like uh, the, the, all the spiritual gifts, every talk that the, the entire talk Pastor Yomi gave, it was about everything I've been doing. And I was like, in my, like I was bending my head, like I wanted uh, the floor to swallow me that day. And um, I was like, what's happening? I thought, I was like, I, I wondered if Pastor Yomi knew about me. I keep on asking myself, like, what's happening? But they kept on telling me about the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit talks and so many things I was asking myself and it was quite overwhelming. And still, but after that, then I, I started coming in for, but if only first half of the meeting, and then then run out to find an excuse because yeah, some <laughs> some of the some of the talks still like where it was kind of like talking about the same thing that like repeating the same thing. It's like like kind of God wanted to show me that that He knows me, like He knows what's going on, and then. Um, at some point, uh, I had to give in. I gave in and uh, got baptized uh, in, in full margin of water and uh, became born again. And uh, I'm kind of nervous and forgetting now. <laughs> yeah. So after, so so thing after 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 get, getting baptized. I still like kept on asking myself, like still, I still kind of like lived a double life, like double lifestyle. And uh, the whole, the whole journey, like the whole, like the, the whole gap of like almost like seven months, I was living a double lifestyle. But the, 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 the entire thing, the, the entire, the, the, the entire, the, all that, the entire period, it was kind of intense and very, very, very like challenging. I did not help myself reading or like try to 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 seek help from any of this uh, any of the the saints from from the church and uh, I ended up I ended up falling back again and then and they came back into the church again and they're leaving both like like double standards basically but later on I uh, thank God that I'm about that. Even coming here, it wasn't hard making decision. Basically, just told me there is a camp, and I was, yeah, let's go. Basically, it's now it is coming easy, and I'm um, I'm thankful to the Lord that I am here now. Thank you, thank you for listening. To me. Um, hi, I'm Kenzie from, yeah, from Pool Fellowship. Um, I can really praise the Lord. Um, my testimony started in Australia with my mum. Um, and she was, um, she thought she was a Christian. She went to church and she lived a good life, a clean life. And, um, but she, she didn't really have any confidence that she was going to go to heaven and she um, couldn't really understand the Bible when she read it. So praise the Lord. She um, called out to the Lord one day and um, she just wanted to know the truth. She wanted to, to have that certainty and um, amazing set of circumstances. We moved um, from where we were in Australia to a, down to the bottom of the States um, to a house that we shouldn't have been able to rent because it was for the military and we weren't in the military. And anyway, we, we moved there and the people right next door um, were from the church and, and they, they witnessed to mum and I can praise the Lord that she, yeah, she took hold of that. She received the Holy Spirit for herself and speaking in tongues and was baptized by full immersion. And and yeah, and she knew she hadn't changed much on the outside, but she knew from then that she did know the Lord. She had the confidence then and she could read, read his words. And yeah, I can praise the Lord. That happened when I was about three months old. So um, subsequently, my dad and my elder sister and brother, um, they all came to the church, were born again. So I was brought up, um, yeah, knowing that there was a God, talking to God, um, praying to God, you know, myself and um, mum praying when everything, anything went wrong. And um, yeah, when I was seven, I prayed with mum to receive the Holy Spirit. I've been trying, praying a few times before that. But yeah, this time I was uh, praying with mum and I received the Holy Spirit, spoke out in tongues, just a very quiet, quiet experience um, and was baptized a week later. 
um, in my bathtub at home um, by the pastor. Yeah, I can praise the Lord. Yeah, it's been a, um, an amazing life. I think uh, being brought up in the Lord from a young age, um, it's more of a, a growing in appreciation sort of a walk. It's, it's, it's understanding that, um, that my life is, is not normal to people in the world, that it doesn't, um, life just doesn't go, go the way um, that our life does in the Lord. Um, and I can just praise the Lord. Yeah, all sorts of things he's, um, he's had his hands on. It wasn't long after I was born again. Um, the mum, dad and I were in a serious car accident. I won't go into details, but um, yeah, I, I should have died from that accident. They, um, the nurses came and said to mum in the waiting room, you know, prepare yourself, your daughter's going to die. There's, there's nothing we can do. The, the only one surgeon in this um, little country hospital in Australia is, is busy operating on somebody else. Um, and just the injuries that I had, um, yeah, there was nothing they could do. I praise the Lord, he kept me alive. Um, I was able to be operated on, everything went really um, smoothly. Yeah, it's a whole, a whole blessing there, lots of details. Um, and then I went into recovery and I got pneumonia and pleurisy and my lungs collapsed. Uh, but my sister who's 11 years old and was due to get married. Um, Mum said, we can't be in hospital anymore. Um, it's time to go. So she had some more prayer and she asked the doctors to do the tests again the next day. Um, and I was completely healed overnight. The Lord had completely healed that. And I can remember that um, as an eight-year-old blowing into the little tube and seeing the, the bubbles go up and the doctors shook their heads and said, uh, okay, you can go. So yeah, I can just praise the Lord one, you know, that's an amazing miracle. Um, during that time, um, my dad was always investing in businesses and um, he, he just enjoyed those things, getting businesses and building them up and, um, yeah, but this time um, for one investment, um, we got ripped off and um, yeah, con man and he took all our money and um, all our investment. And we used to have a, a nice big property in Australia, 10 acre property, and um, we just had to sell it off. We, yeah, we lost all of that. I can remember as a kid uh, living in a caravan in some stranger's shed <laughs> up in Gympie in the middle of nowhere in, in Queensland. And um, that was a really, yeah, it was a really difficult time for the family and um, mum, mum's always a rock, but um, I suppose it shook dad a bit more because he's, you know, he worked in the banks, new businesses, knew how it worked. And all of a sudden we had this, this debt that we, we owed hundreds of thousands of dollars to these two um, banks in Australia. We were living in a caravan in somebody's shed and there was nothing we could do. There was nothing we could do to get, to get out of this situation. And um, and he knew that. And um, praise the Lord, what happened was um, after paying, you know, like $10 a week to pay off these debts that were just, you know, insurmountable, um, one of the banks wrote to him and said, make us an offer to clear this debt. And dad working the banks knew well, this isn't how it works anyway. So he wrote back $1,000 or something and they completely cleared the debt off. And then the other bank wrote and did the same thing. So with, with, with no skill, no wisdom, nothing of ourselves. The Lord just completely turned that situation around and we just, you know, this, this hole that you could never get out of. The Lord just completely changed, changed everything. And um, we were able to move and um, mum got a job at the council and dad helped um, my sister and brother-in-law's business. And just, you know, the Lord just completely turned that situation around. It was nothing that we could have done for ourselves. Um, yeah, just praise the Lord, just growing up as a kid's, you know, I just, I just remember those things and I know those things and I know that the Lord's, there's nothing he can't do. And I just, you know, I have to see that and I have to trust that and, and praise the Lord that has happened so many times in my life that I had to put things to the test or, or you've gone through a trial or something and, and he's always been there and there's, there's never been anything that, that he hasn't been able to do. And, you know, I've had jobs and houses and, you know, whatever we need and husbands, and one husband. And, um, <laughs> And so that, I'll briefly go into that one. So that was, I'd praise in Australia because I was distracted at a camp like this, um, thinking about what brother I could marry. And, and I, I didn't listen to any of the talks and the testimonies and I was just completely distracted. And I went home and I realized what, what had happened. And I just put it to the Lord and I said, Lord, just take all these thoughts out of my head. So I, I don't know the end from the beginning. I don't know somebody's heart. I don't know the future. If there is somebody for me, you just show me, but I don't want to think about it. You, you are in charge of that. I just want to get on with serving the Lord. And, and, and that was it. And I left it at the Lord's. And um, uh, in that time, I, I moved over to England. 
and it was probably like a few years later and uh, it was the first um first liverpool rally and it was at um sandra's house and she'd invited some saints around for dinner anyway brother came in and introduced himself and we shook hands and god said yes and i thought oh okay there he is <laughs> so, <laughs> his name was jimmy and that's that's pretty well all i knew about him and um yeah so that was on a thursday and and i just knew the lord just said yes and i just knew that was there was no doubt there was no you know funny feeling or anything it just, God just said yes and um yeah so the weekend we sort of chatted but didn't really go out of my way to talk to him or anything. and then by the monday we had a conversation and we knew they were going to get married and that was all very normal and obviously thinking back now that was not yeah it's not the usual way but that that was what i prayed for i prayed just lord you just show me i i don't know what's going to happen you just show me that you know and i was happy with the lord to do it and um yeah i can praise the lord that was 15 years ago in a couple of days um that we were married and yeah the lord's just completely blessed it and um yeah all sorts of things yeah lots of things i've had to pray for and um but I just praise the Lord that he is the perfect father, whatever you're looking for, whatever you need, whatever happens, he, he's always the answer. He's always got it, got it there waiting. And um, yeah, I just praise the Lord for everything he does. Amen. Fantastic testimony. Praise the Lord. It's just a really good reminder that the Lord uh, is our heavenly father and knows what we need and he knows uh what we need to hear as well and uh fantastic reminders there looking forward to hearing some more testimonies during the week it's going to be good let me just do a couple more courses now let's do number 554 i am the way the truth and the love We'll go after four. One, two, three, four. I am the way, the truth, and the life. These are the words that Jesus said. Do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. For if you love the Lord, the Lord will set you free. Son, the Holy Ghost, all of them are free in one. Do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. For if you love the Lord, the Lord will set you free. Fantastic. We'll do our last chorus. So uh, before we go into the items, we're going to do number 841, According to Faith. I'm just going to quickly run through the order tonight. What we've got, we've got a load of items tonight. So thank you so much for all those who have come in and they're going to share some songs. So we've got the Dutch ladies, that's what we're going to start with. Uh, so the Dutch ladies, and followed that by a song by Bob Jones. Yeah, yeah. And we've got Pastor Warren, who's going to bring us an item, and uh, that should be really good. Um, we've got Robin as well. Robin's going to do an item, I think. Yeah, fantastic. We've got Emma, Christina, and Lauren. And then we've got Luke from the, the Pool Fellowship. We've got Back to the Future. So that should be good. And then we've got Alicia and Monica as well. So uh, some really good things to look forward to. And then we've got two talks after that as well. Fantastic. Good space. Are you walking with me? One more after four and a pause, I think. Yeah, I'll try to see how this one goes. Okay, after four. One, two, three, four. Are you walking with Jesus? Will you go where he leads us? Will you trust him in every way? Love 
So give a round of applause to the Dutch ladies.
say that that song, the lyrics were written from the perspective of one of the disciples at Jesus' crucifixion, just to make it make sense. <laughs> This will be probably our only chance. I know where he is. And uh, he let them out. Uh, Caiaphas said to you, it's all right, you have a band. Now, a band would be a 40 to 60 men, right? But as they gathered momentum, they were joined by a lot more. And the Bible says it was a multitude. So it was over 100. Or, or we don't know the exact number. And they come to get Jesus. Now, Judas was leaving. And Jesus said to them, we're going to the garden. And the higher up, and they didn't really know Jesus. He just looked like one of the disciples. He said, When I go up, and I'll acknowledge him as the master, and he didn't make it, that's like a handshake now, wrap him, wrap him. Well, they did talk to kill him because they wanted to kill him. He went on a bed and go. And the disciples were sleeping. And as they approached in the garden with lanterns, torches, and clubs, Jesus said to his disciples after the dead time, Take your rest now. But then in the moment, Jesus perceived they were coming and he said, no, get up and get ready. And Jesus stepped out of it with the disciples to meet them. And as he met them, he said to them, uh, why did you come out to me? Why did you take me in the temple? You come to me like a thief with swords and clubs. And they were out of blood. 
and the servants of the high priest that be worn by the high priest. You better make sure we get this man. You better make sure the job's done. We've got enough people. We can't let this chance go. And they have hatred and envy, anger for Jesus. And they approached him. And Jesus warned the disciples to uh, uh, behave and stand back. But they were all carrying little bag of swords. And they looked at Jesus as if to say, just not to us, just give the word and we're by your side. As Peter had also said, I will die fighting in this way for you. But there were two fights. There was one physically, but Jesus was fighting for the soul of mankind. And he was fighting another way. And he had to die. And they marched to him. And the servant of the high priest stepped out. And Peter jumped in and tried to kill him, but missed him and cut the deer off. Now there's blood being shed. There's going to be a big fight. There's going to be a war between them. And the disciples of our numbered, and we would surely have been killed. And Jesus knew this, but it was a prophecy that the shepherds were smitten and the sheep are scattered. But the prophecy is, I have lost none of them. And so Jesus uh, picks the ear up and puts it back on the servant of the high priest and stems the flow at the anger for a moment. And then Jesus says, He knows we're going to come, and he had the man of the disciples. And he said, if you're after me, let these go their way. And then the disciples that stand back and all, what? He's not going to wait for power to come from the Lord to get them. And he's not doing anything. And they charge and they grab them. And the disciples are terrified and they flee everywhere for their lives. And there, there would be blood on their hands now to Peter. And warrants would go out and uh, make it on for their, for their arrest. And they flee in terror. And Jesus was taken. And this is where we start off with a little song after the grab hold of Jesus. And they bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. And they spat upon the Savior. So pure and free from sin, they say, crucify him, he lay. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone. When they nailed him to the cross, his mother stood nearby. She said, Woman, behold thy son. She said, I thirst for water, but they gave him not to drink. The simple work of man was done. He could have fallen. Ten thousand angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called ten thousand angels, but he died alone for you and me. To the howling of the youth, he did not fall mercy side. The cross of shame he took oh, and he cried, this finish, and he gave himself to die. Salvation, wondrous plan, was done. He could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the world. And set him free. He could have called ten thousand angels, but he died alone for you and me. But he died alone for you and me. So nice. 
I was wondering uh, whether or not to do this uh, item, but God said yes. So um, <laughs> he said, uh, he said the saints are incredibly patient and long suffering. So God said yes. So here we go, guys. Now, <laughs> this is, um, I hope you said yes. Oops. Okay, let's get on with it. Look. This is uh, a little uh, blues I picked up down St. Louis Way. Great WC Handy. Bit of a blues man. It's all about outreaching. All about outreaching. Street witnessing. The perils thereof. Okay. and a coffee that's the way to go three leaflets and a coffee that's the way to go well it might be a start but you can do much better i know oh yeah <laughs> Now some folks, they mock you. Some folks, they just plain stare. Oh yeah. That's St. Louis Blues, by the way. Some folks, they mock you. Some folks, they just plain stare. But when you least expect it, here's the one who really cares, really cares. Sometimes it can be scary, sometimes it's just plain cold. Now sometimes it's scary, sometimes it's just plain cold. Suddenly give a leaflet, 
it turns to pure gold, pure gold. <laughs> Gospel in a leaflet, that's the seed we sow. Gospel in a leaflet, oh, that's the seed we sow. Well, if we don't tell the people how they gonna know, gonna know. Let's drop the blues a bit, folks. Here we go, a little bit deeper in St. Louis. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Sorry, Steve. Like fishes love the sea. Oh, well, I love my coffee. Like fishes love the sea. But I love the gospel so much more, you see. You see. <laughs> Three leaflets and a coffee. Oh, that's the way to go. Tell me about it. Three leaflets and a coffee. Oh, that's the way to go. Well, it might be a start, but you can do much better. I know. song is essentially a list of all the things that God did. Life's busy by day. Sometimes it's easy to stay. that he will take care of for me. There's so many things I can lean on in times like these makes my space to just focus, reflect on the basics that my God has promised to me. He is faithful, he is kind, he is patient and he's wise. He is unparalleled. He will answer if I ask for help. He's Jehovah, he's the vine. He's my shelter all of the 
time he's my savior and worthy and truly my true bread of life he's the father that i can call mine he's given me purpose in a life that otherwise would be pointless with a name for my present as well as my future, eternal life is my goal. His words are my anchor, they lead me right through the hardest of fires and bring me through unharmed, feeling so grateful and new. His promises are true, he is caring, he's enough. He's forgiving, and He knows how to build me up. He is holy and blesses when I do things right by His word. And I'll always be heard. He is faithful, He is kind. He is sovereign throughout all of time. He is truth, and He gave me the gift of his spirit inside he's the father that i can call mine he's the father that i can call mine he's jehovah he's the vine He's my shelter all of the time. He's my savior and worthy and truly my true bread of life. He's the father that I can call mine. Fantastic. Great stuff. So a um, few more items now. So in a moment, we're going to call Emma, Christina and Lauren up. And then after that, Brother Luke from the Paul Assembly. So uh, let's give a hand to the next item. Oh, 
Right. Just to explain, um, there's a chorus in the chorus book. Don't know if anyone knows it. Um, I want everyone's help. Um, so if we could all be upstanding, please. And if you could put 64, course 64 onto the screen, please. Don't worry, no one's got to sing, only I'm singing. But I want your, when it comes to certain bits, I want you to do the actions for me. It's not the one. I'm sure it's a different one. That's the one. So, I'm sure everyone's familiar with this song. So, when it says clap your hands, clap your hands. When it's stamp your feet, you need to stamp your feet. Right? So, after two. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> saved and you know it. <laughs> Now clap your hands. If you save down you know it, stamp your feet. Save down you know it, stamp your feet. Save down you know it, then your life will surely show it. Save down you know it, stamp your feet. If you save down you know it, say amen. If you save down you know it, say amen. If you save down you know it, show it. Amen. Amen. Say then you know it do all three. Amen. You say then you know it do all three. Amen. Say then you know it then you know it. So the story. clap you. Amen. Well done. <laughs> Great stuff, fantastic, really enjoying it. Great um, items that we're having so far. We've just got two more to go. So um, we're gonna call on, so we've got Back to the Future next. Great, Scott. Um, I went to, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Don't know what, actually what that means. I probably shouldn't say things like that, but hey, there you go. Just, just pretend that that didn't happen, okay? And then we'll end on Alicia and Monica. So Back to the Future, if you'd like to come forward, please. So this is an oldie, well, an oldie where I come from. Jordan gathered his 
disciples made the fishes of men. Oh, Jesus walked on water and said, trust in me. Peter followed Jesus but fell in the sea. The people would come and watch him preach all day. And they say, oh, Jesus took all my pain away. Go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Jesus was good. His father told him that he'd die in Calvary. Jesus was crucified to set us free. Rose from the grave on the third day. Promise is comforted to keep the devil at bay. Will your name be in the book of life? For oh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Go, Jesus, go, go. Jesus is good. Um, this is just a simple little song, so I hope you enjoy. Oh. I've wandered near and far, I've wandered every part of life's old winding path, but I never heard of truth. A straight and narrow way, well, that would make more sense. I'll follow on and see if God will prove himself to me, the kingdom of heaven. It's where I'm heading to, I'm just a pilgrim, passing through the kingdom of heaven. It's where I'm heading to, I'm just a pilgrim traveling, stranger passing through. My provision's all but gone, and my strength is next to none. But His grace is my portion, and I'll not want none lack. Yes, He's always got my back, and He teaches me to share blessings freely received. To give as I believe the kingdom of heaven It's where I'm heading to, I'm just a pilgrim Passing through the kingdom of heaven It's where I'm heading to, I'm just a pilgrim Traveling stranger passing through Foxes, holes, and birdies' nests, the Creator over them protects, but no dwelling place did Jesus have. His calling was above. Well, I sold all my worldly goods for that one great priceless pearl, and it's my helper every day. Yes, the Spirit leads the way, the kingdom of heaven. It's where I'm heading to, I'm just a pilgrim Passing through the kingdom of heaven It's where I'm heading to, I'm just a pilgrim Traveling stranger, passing through the kingdom of heaven It's where I'm heading to, I'm just a pilgrim Passing through the kingdom of heaven It's where I'm heading to I'm just a pilgrim traveling stranger Passing through I'm just a pilgrim traveling stranger Passing through Okay, that's, all, that's all the items for tonight. So let's uh, give not just the items, but also for the sound techies, 
And the guys at the back have big round of applause. It's been a great night, hasn't it? Oh Lord, our Lord, number 449. Okay, let's really think on the words and we're going to go after two. One, two. Oh Lord, our Lord. How excellent your name is, how excellent your name in all the earth. Your glory fills the heavens beyond the farthest star, how excellent your name in all think about the heavens, the moon and all the stars, I wonder what you ever saw in me. But you took me and you loved me, given me a crown, and now I'll praise your name eternally oh lord our lord how excellent your name is how excellent your name is musicians trying to get back. I sort of get in character again. I feel like Ken Dodd. I'm doing <laughs> I'm, I'm almost with you. Okay, folks. I'll let you know when the 15 minutes starts. <laughs> it could be sometime. No, no. Uh, Honouring God by moving forward. It's a uh, a Latin motto, it's come down to us in Latin, quis separabit ab amore Christi, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, from Romans 8. Uh, it was adopted in part by a regiment in the British Army. And the part was quis separabit, 
quis separabit, great motto for regiment, who shall separate us? But as we will find with this regiment, uh, they were true in a sense uh, to the whole of the quote, that there is something higher than the idea of uh, who shall separate us as a group, as a fellowship. It's a foundation stone in the Bible is the unity of the fellowship. And without it, in, in a way we perish. And it's the great desire of the Lord that we stay together in the truth, in the gospel, in the doctrine, who shall separate us. And we're going to see today that that is part of honoring God by moving forward. That is the mechanism by which we move forward, by unity. Let nothing separate us. As we'll see at the end, there's one thing that can. One thing that can. And the uh, story, if you like, that happened to this British regiment, uh, that they were true uh, to that even higher ideal. And you're probably thinking, what can be higher than the unity of the saints? And honoring God. And God delights in unity. And if we look at uh, the first... Uh, Letter to the Thessalonians in chapter one is a remarkable chapter, actually. It, it talks about the entire theme of honoring God by moving forward, but it finishes on a key idea. It says uh, in verse one of chapter one, Thessalonians, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Interesting little throne. This assembly, like us, like the fellowship, is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. Paul established the church at Thessalonica. The church is now moving forward and moving onward. And Paul honors that. He interestingly honors that, as we will see, in what he and his fellow laborers did in the name of Christ and through Christ. But then he goes one step forward and says, but I'm honoring you. For well, you have now picked up the cause and are going forward. And how are you going forward? You are going forward by honoring God in honoring the gospel, in honoring the Lord. It's an ascending spiral. I think the church doesn't move forward in a straight line. The church moves forward in an ascending spiral from earth to the kingdom of heaven. And it's a spiral where our feet are on the ground, but our eyes are fixed on the heavens. Where our hearts are with the fellowship, but our souls are in Christ. Honor God by honoring the saints. Honor the saints by honoring the gospel. Honor the gospel by honoring God. And so it goes, that ascending spiral, waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord means patient service. Waiting for the Lord, preaching and living the gospel. And as we'll see in this passage, reputation by deeds, not words. As Paul says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. So they have a history. Already this fellowship, very young in the Lord, has a history. And Paul is not interested in their 
the history that went before, you know, back, you know, what Thessalonica was famous for, who founded it, what their laws were based on, the culture of the people, their language. No, he's talking about the fellowship, their history. It's young, it's fresh, it's vibrant, and it's effective. Now, the regiment who had the motto, Quis Separabit, were the Connaught Rangers, an Irish regiment raised in, in Galway, Connaught and Connemara, in what later became the Free State of Ireland. But they're raised fairly late in the peace, and there are many famous British regiments. You know, there's the, um, the Green Howards, uh, the Cherry Pickers, uh, you can think of uh, the Cameron Highlanders, the Black Watch, the Welsh Fusiliers, the Guards Regiments, Parachute Regiment, all with their reputation fixed on deeds, not words. But the Connaught Rangers are quite interesting. They came late to the game. Uh, they came, they're formed early in the 19th century. And they went straight into the fire of British imperial policy. So they fought in the Napoleonic Wars, chiefly in the Peninsula campaigns. Uh, they fought with distinction in the Crimean War. Uh, they fought uh, in the Boer War. They fought in the Zulu War. They were at the liberation of Jerusalem in 1917. They fought on the Battle of the Marne very costly battle in the First World War. They suffered terrible losses in the Battle of the Somme. But they were true to their motto. Makes it one of my favorite regiments, Quis Separabit, who shall separate us. And they were often uh, welcomed into the line because of that quality. And no man judged them by their family origins or where they particularly came from or what their personal beliefs were. They were Connaught Rangers. And exclusively, as far as we can tell, from Connemara, Connaught and Galway. And they had a family feel to them. And if we look at this passage in the first Thessalonians, you can see the family feel here in this young, fresh, vibrant fellowship. And ye became followers uh, of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. That's hot campaigns. Into the fire they went almost straight away as a young assembly, trying to get off to the ground of persecution. Uh, and some of the persecution in those days, particularly savage. It was kind of low level warfare. With joy of the Holy Ghost, that was your reaction to it. So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. Suddenly your reputation goes before you. Again, extending the allegory, like with the Connaught Rangers, they were new on the block. There were many regiments that could say, who are you? We've been around a long time. Who are you? But their reputation quickly went before them because they had this idea of being true to themselves, who they were and where they came from, and yet utterly loyal to the crown. and favoured regiments to fight alongside other regiments. And yet they were their own people. And this is one of the glories, I guess, of, of revival fellowship, is that we are not a church militant. We are not a great global brand, you know, overwhelming by marketing, et cetera, et cetera. Every assembly is the same and every assembly is different. Every saint is the same and every saint is different. And the doctrine we live by and the code that holds us together makes us family. Doesn't matter whether we're in Laos or the Philippines 
or Brazil or uh, Fresno, the Netherlands, Czechia, here in Great Britain and Ireland. It's what we have through the Holy Ghost and what we believe in. We're interested in where we are now and who we are. And that was the thing that impressed people about the Connaught Rangers. They didn't do tradition. They weren't old enough. They did quis separabit, who shall separate us? So that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Archaea. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Archaea, but also in every place your faith to God would is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. What a fellowship is this? New boy on the block, tiny little church, bang, hit the ground running. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. It was tough to be a Christian in Thessalonica, surrounded by the big business, the big marketing scam of temples and pagan worship in the days of the Roman Empire. And Paul says, you stood, you stood. Reputation by deeds, not words. Who shall separate us? The Connaught Rangers, they remain true to Quis Separabit, but they broke the code. At the end of the First World War, they had had to dig deep as Irishmen in the British Army. They had had to take their part in policing and overthrowing the 1916 Easter Rising in Ireland, and they did it with dignity, unlike the broken reputation of the black and tans. They did it with dignity and they did it with fairness because they were Irishmen first and foremost, but they kept their loyalty to the crown. And if this is a rising against the crown, then we shall fight to put it down. And it was put down. And the Connaught Rangers were dispersed by battalion to various parts. And then in 1921, what is seen by historians typically as a huge mistake, the British declared martial law in Ireland, abandoned the democratic principles which they promoted right across the empire and declared martial law in Ireland. And they lost the hearts and souls of the Irish people in one sweep. I'm not gonna get political about this. I'll have Irishmen queuing up at the door here. <laughs> but looking at it in history, it was a bit of a mistake. Because the Connaught Rangers who had been so loyal were involved in a mutiny. Now it wasn't a violent mutiny. It was more like a peaceful protest that got out of hand, but they made a stand that unity functions as it should in an army when the army adheres to the higher principles of recognizing the men who serve in it and the women who serve in it. And they said, we would love to stay quis separabit from the British Army, but we cannot separate ourselves. We are Irish. We cannot, for conscience sake, continue to bear arms. Now, God forbid, that the fellowship should ever suddenly at any point pursue another doctrine. Brethren, it has happened in history. God forbid it happens to us. I don't believe it ever will. But that's why we keep ourselves not only united, quis separabit, 
who shall separate us? But finish it off. Abamore Christi, according to the love of God, according to the love of Christ, as it says in the last verse, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. That's what it's all about. We are not just together because we are together. We are together for a cause. We are together for a belief. We are together for the kingdom of heaven. We are together for Christ's sake. And that is the precious irony that can split us. And for those of you who have been veterans in this regiment called the Revival Fellowship, we did face such the time some decades ago. where we were a wonderful fellowship of quis separabit, who shall separate us. But then we had to do, as the Connaught Rangers did, what is our Kaya calling? Who is our family? Who are we really? Abamore Christi, by the love of Christ, by the word of God, by the Holy Ghost, for the waiting of the kingdom of heaven. story of the Connaught Rangers, a lot of historians said they ended in dishonor. They did not end in dishonor. They ended in a higher honor. They moved forward by achieving a higher honor, what some of them called the green, the green. And others simply called Ireland, for we are Irish. And we could say ourselves, for our higher calling. For we are not revival fellowship. We are saints of God. We are sons and daughters of the living God. We are his creatures born again to live in his kingdom. And by the grace of God, as you read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, the grace stay with you by the grace of God in this wonderful fellowship where quis separabit, who shall separate us? When the free state was declared in 1922, the British army seemed to see, and the British government, straight away what had happened, they didn't disband the Connaught Rangers, they allowed them to join the Free State of Ireland and the Free State welcomed them and made the remarkable acknowledgement, which was not protested, that the Free State would now guarantee and pay all the pensions of the Connaught Rangers through their service in the British Army and through the, to their retirement serving as soldiers in the new army. Because what they had done was right. And sometimes we may get to a position where we can lose honor by the stand we take. We can lose reputation by the stand we take. We can be mocked and disowned by the stand we take because we honor God, because we honor the doctrine, because we honor the word, and because we honor those who are of our family through the spirit. I love this fellowship. Without this fellowship, I would be broken time and time again. Without this fellowship that God established, I could not make it. Make it? Make it where? To the kingdom of heaven. And that's where our honor lies. That's where our honor lies. That is where the ascending spiral ends by the saints, by the gospel, by the living God. Amen? Okay, I'll leave it there, pass over to... Pastor Martin, it's not... Uh, prayer line before, yep. Prayer line and then Pastor Martin. So those who normally pray with the people, they're just like...
do that. So that's the person that we need to magnify and look through uh, the magnifying glass of him. Same size, but we just see him so much clearer. Um, and remember, if you do zoom in on God, you can make him bigger, but you see him exactly the same. Still exhort him and you'll grow. Not by looking in some dickum thing that you, you came here at, um, at being five foot 11 and you've gone home 11 foot or something like that. It's not going to work, but you'll grow in the Lord. You'll get bigger, you'll get better, and you can go forward with the Lord. First Samuel 14. Samuel 14, we'll go from verse 6. A couple of verses here. And Jonathan said unto the young man that bare his armor, come and let us go over uh, unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. And his armor bearer said unto him, do all that is in thine heart, turn thee, behold, I am with thee according to thy heart. So this was the situation where, once again, we're looking at Israel being in a mess and everything going wrong for them. And the Philistines are over the other side and they were calling the odds, calling the shots. Very low point in the life of Israel. King Saul he was the king at the time. He was told he was going to lose the kingdom. And um, that was going to be it. Um, so he wasn't really 100% putting his whole effort into everything. Um, just going through the routine. That's really all you can say about the king at the time. He wasn't ready to go forward at all. He was just there. And that was it. But it's Jonathan who comes forward. This is great, isn't it? He said, let's go over. And he doesn't mean to, we'll go over where the uh, Israelites are and we'll go over with on this side. He means, let's go over on the other side and we will take a shot at these guys who are calling the odds, the Philistines. But he knew he couldn't do that on his own. He had to have help. No point in just running out there and doing what you want. He had to have help from possibly his best mate or the per person that he probably knew best of all. And that's his trusty armor bearer who was there with him. And the armor bearer, straight away, when Jonathan asked the question, um, shall we go over there? He says, yes, I am with thee. I'm going to go with you. Don't worry. None of the other guys go there. We'll go with you. And we're going to go forward. I'm fed up with somebody else calling the odds against God's people. And they got to stop. And when you look at that situation, um, behind Israel, behind Jonathan and his armor bearer, there was nothing. No backup. There was nothing at all. All there were uh, were men that had gone to sleep, that lost heart in the battle, um, that were taken easy, 600 people under a tree with the king Saul. And yet ahead of them, were two sharp rocks coming into um, like a, um, a valley, which is probably not the best place to go and attack somebody, but that's what they were going to do. And they were vulnerable when they went into this valley, or were they? Because if God goes with them, they're not uh, vulnerable at all, are they? And nor are you, wherever you go, and you put the trust, your trust in the Lord, your faith in the Lord, then you can go forward. You're not vulnerable anymore because God is looking after you. But it's interesting to see, really, isn't it? How one man steps forward and says, yeah, come on, let's do something. And away they went. And you like to think it inspired more people. You'd have to look at that story yourself a bit later on and find out exactly what happened. Okay, let's go to 2 Samuel 15. Make this last one.
like these scriptures. These are the ones where I had trouble with somebody's name, so bear with me. <laughs> so 2 Samuel 15. Um, where should we go? Let's have a look. We'll go from 19. And this is David talking here. And it says, Then said the king to Ittai, the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Question mark. Return to thy place and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger and also an exile. Uh, whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us? Seeing I go whither, I may return thou and take back thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. And I tie answered the king and said, as the Lord liveth, and with my Lord the king liveth, surely in what place my Lord the king shall be, where in death or in life, even there also will thy servant be. And David said to Ittai, go and pass over. And he did. He went over and passed over. And all the men and all that were with the little ones that were with him, they all went to well, this is another bad occasion. We're picking a few of those today. Um, but this is a bad occasion for David. It's not good. He's actually um, being run out of Jerusalem. He was the king. And yet somebody had come, his own son, to take the kingdom over, totally against the Lord, what he was doing. And um, David is being run out of Jerusalem by the people that he loved. His own son was doing that. Um, and probably the thing I think that hurt David most of all, somebody said to him, the hearts of the people are after Absalom. And I think at that point, he just thought to himself, that's it. What can I do? I've lost the support of the people that I love. Yet still within this, this group of people that are around, there were a small group of people who stay loyal. And one of them is this guy. This guy. Gittite, the Gittite, really, he's somebody who's completely outside the family of Israel. And David comes there and says to him, go home. What are you going to do? You're a stranger in this land. This is not your land. All those things happened yesterday. Now's a chance for you to go back to where you want to be. And he says to him to go home. But the reply is, I'm with you. Or... If you live, I'm with you. Or if you die, I'm still with you. I'm going nowhere except with you. And he stayed and he passed over. In other words, he stuck right with David. And there was a few other motley crew that were involved in this little team here. But I was just thinking that should really, sorry, can I have a drink? That should really be our life as well. Whatever the Lord says, I'll do it, Lord. If I, um, if I die before you come back, I'm happy with that. I know that you'll come back for me. Or if you're alive at the time, I want to see you, Lord. I want to see you come back. I want to see the faces of the people that have mocked you all that time. I want to see those things. But whatever happens, I'm with you right until the very end. And that was how Ittite saw as well there. Strangers, we were like that brought into the house of God where we were out doing the things that the people of the world did. Now we brought in to the family of God. And it's a fantastic place to be. And all the people said, and we're happy here and we're not going away. We're staying with the real King. We're staying with the King, Jesus Christ. And um, it's a bit like um, Ruth said to Naomi, she said, um, wherever you go, I'm going. So don't think you're going to lose me because I'm going to stick right with you. Or Peter, when he's asked by Jesus, uh, all these people are now going away from me. What are you going to do? How are you going to do? What are these disciples going to do? And Peter says to him, you have the words of eternal life. In other words, I'm going nowhere. I'm staying here. So what do we want people to see just to sum up with? In the Magdalene Glass, when they picked that up, 
and they shine that forward at us. What do they see in us? I believe they see exactly what we were talking about in Psalm 34. They see a people who are exalting and magnifying God highly. That's what they'll see in you. They'll see that your life is about Jesus Christ. What about else do they see in there? Would they see Jonathan and his armor bearer ready to go, ready to show our God is the God and we're all behind you, Lord. We want to go. We want to bring glory to our God. And like Ittite, brought in from elsewhere, like us, not the family of God, made the family of God. And um, that was David bringing him in. Jesus Christ has brought us in there. And like Ittite, we'll go anywhere. we do anything to magnify our God most highly. And all the people said, yeah, Pastor Steve, I think. Thank you. Uh, just a just a few uh, things. Uh, don't tap the microphones, please. Uh, they, it, it, I think it might damage them. Uh, it's just not necessarily the, the the good mics. They're sensitive. This one particularly, but I think the others also. Uh, uh, don't tap them. Uh, they, they'll sort it out up there if something needs something out. Sorting out. After the meeting tonight, in in where they use the sun, what they use for Sunday school, the creed room which we've used in years past for a prayer room is a prayer room. Okay, so so if anybody wants after the meeting, uh, not long after the meeting, to pray for the Holy Spirit, particularly tonight, uh, the Liverpool, some people from the Liverpool Assembly will look after a seekers meeting. Uh, they will help you. Uh, I'll tell you a little story. I met a, I met, um, we've got a market stall that we take out and I met a, a vicar just before Christmas. I met him. And I quite liked him. He seemed he seemed all right. And, and when I went to meeting, somebody said, "Oh, in his in his it's an Anglican church, a, lot, a, a number of people are spirit filled." So I met him again a few weeks ago, and uh, I said, "I oh, heard people in your church are spirit filled," and he said, "He said no. He said he said he said we leave that to God." And then and then I got talking to him a bit, and I said, "What about you? You know, when you read about speaking in tongues, what about you?" And he said, I wait for it. And you could hear this yearning. He said, I wait for God to give me that. And uh, I quite, I, you know, I, I tried, I said, just come to meet me, will you, please? And uh, I said, it doesn't say wait and you shall find. It says seek and you shall find. And you do come across a number of people that are waiting for something when the Lord, you, you can read it specifically about the Holy Spirit. Seek and you shall find. So there's opportunities tonight, not just to pray for that but to pray for other things and that will be the prayer room it is the sunday school room as well so there may be some times when you just need to uh, hang around for, for, for five or ten minutes uh, uh, till, till they finish but liverpool will uh, look after that tonight uh seekers meeting prayer room tomorrow we've got jamie particularly is, is where it's that's a slightly different so after lunch because so, we don't know what time the barbecue kind of works out we don't want to rush the barbecue so uh, uh Probably about half one, two o'clock. Jamie's going to do a presentation uh, on um, uh, aspects of the Hebrew and Greek language and uh, this type of thing. And it, 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 it's good knowledge. That, that's what I'd say. Uh, who we got tomorrow? Uh, Dan in the morning. Bob Morley, Dave Burns, Colin Farrar. Uh, items to Roland. Uh, so uh, if you can take your items tomorrow to Roland, we got eight in tonight. Uh, that would probably be average. When it comes to the last night, we won't extend the meeting for items because by the time the talk comes, you, you're just you're zombies. You know what I mean? So so uh, 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 yeah, uh, we keep it. But it's good. You, you know, it's it's good. Um, I, th I think they've got some a box of tricks up in up in the box. You know, the moon and stars that we used to get years and years ago. So if you want to do a skit around that, then then uh, I, I like that kind of thing. Lee Finney with his great big sandwich. Anyone remember that? With his massive sani. Yeah, good memories. Um, so th the intent after the meeting is fellowship here because there's tea here. There's fellowship in the, in the in the dining room, which we nobody used yesterday. That's fine. Uh, and then obviously in the houses, the the plan is to have in 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 the Fonthill House and um, Middle House that are very nice lounges. 
And the idea is to appoint people each night to be a host. You can go there and you know, you, you know there'll, there'll, be, there'll be a welcome for you and a, a tea and toast. I haven't organised it really. Uh, but there is, there is um, for, for one person in Middle House and for one person in Fontill, we have left bread and butter and jam out for us tonight. So you might want to take that and use that. And, and it'll be more tomorrow, but it'll be more organised tomorrow. So, so, so we, can, we can tell you. Uh, barbecue. It was good to see you. Uh, 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 great today. You know, it was great. It's a fabulous scene, really. Uh, the, the barbecue. And you, you just look around. Um, the, the fellowship that goes around it. The, the quality of the food was good. Uh, well, not long after I first came along, it was, it was in North London. I was, I was in the South London Fellowship. I went to North London for, for some events. I used to hire halls. One of the notable things, right? So afterwards, the pastor just said, put the chairs away. And you go to get a chair. There's, there's no chair because everyone's grabbed a chair. And I said to this brother, I said, too many Indians. Because <laughs> you, know, you couldn't find a chair. But it was, at, at the same time as people being that willing, there was revival. And it was good to see with Liverpool today, you know, uh, uh, five minutes after the meeting, it's, 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 it's flooded with, with people. Uh, it's, you know, a good job. Tomorrow is North London. Uh, one, one thing maybe I'd mentioned about in the early 90s uh, was sometimes in those days, there was a competition between fellowships. That comes to North. It's good that it's not here. You know what I mean? It's good. You know, we, you know, we, we really are rejoicing in everyone uh, that's doing well. And there's quite a few assemblies doing obviously well, but we're all doing well in, in, in other ways. But, but yeah, I uh, just thought, thought I'd, I'd mention that. Swimming, uh, for, especially for the kids, uh, it's not advisable to swim straight after you've eaten. Okay, it's not advisable. You just need to, especially if they're excited. They're excited to get the burger or the sausage roll. They're excited to go swimming. And, and, and so uh, just be mindful of that, uh, just to settle them down a little bit. Uh, I still think Giuseppe might come. Uh, enjoying the testimonies very much. Great tonight, you know what I mean? Uh, there's, a, there's a scripture that talks about uh, the Lord will bring out of his treasure things old and things new. So we've got a number of people here now that, 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 that we, we, we will get on during the week. You'll get a tap on the shoulder. Uh, and testimonies that we haven't heard before, though he might have been around for two years because we haven't been here for uh, for two years. And then, uh, you know, Candy, the, you know, the treasure from the past, really, or the treasure of things that have happened uh, in the past. It's, it's just very good. So, so uh, uh, yeah. Uh, say hello to, I'll, I'll, I'll say hello to people on Zoom. I'm not sure how many there, there are tonight. There's 20 odd on Zoom today. I noticed that when the screen went past and uh, they'll be able to have breakout rooms afterwards with each other. There isn't much interaction between us on that way. And a good number of people watch the meetings on YouTube. Uh, a, a, a really good number. Uh, some of them locally live. Uh, some of them in Australia. Uh, people that have been here. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 I, we just like it. Uh, that, that, that you kind of come here. You know, and, and uh, hopefully in time to come, uh, you, you'll come here like you used to come here. Because that's one thing that's that's different this year is that we've got very few businesses from overseas, uh, uh, but you know uh, that that will come back. All right, can't think of anything else. Have I forgotten anything that I must I must announce? Can't see anything anyway. Uh, so uh, Russell and the bands, please. Okay, we'll just end on a couple of quick choruses. Um, we'll try the camp theme. We'll do that one first. Have we, if we've got the camp theme available. Have we got the words available? I don't know what the number is. Um, 94? 
Oh, nine, nine two four. Nine two four. Okay, what we'll do, oh, there we go. Fantastic, there we are. Right, okay, so if you know it, sing up nice and loud. I'm still learning it as well. So uh, those who know it well, really raise, you, raise the roof there, okay. And we'll go after two then. One, two. sounded good and we'll just quickly end on four five five my eyes have been enlightened and then we'll close me with a word of prayer nice one after three one two three my eyes have been enlightened to know the hope of that which Jesus called me to The riches of his glorious inheritance I know the word of God is true Far above a rule and authority Power, dominion and might I'm seated with Jesus Complete in his fullness Victory is now my right My eyes have been enlightened To know the hope of that which Jesus called me to The riches of his glorious inheritance I know the word of God is true Far above a rule and authority Power, dominion and might I'm seated with Jesus completing his fullness Victory is now my right Victory is now my right Victory is now my right.
Okay, if you'd like to stand, we're just going to get Brother Colin at the front. If you'd just like to close the meeting with a word of prayer, and then we'll head into a time of fellowship. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And what people said, amen, that's it.